Uh, from Moscow, I'm now joined by DW correspondent Emily Sherwin. Uh, Emily, what can we expect today from this meeting? Well, Annalena Baerbock is starting her visit here in Moscow at the uh, State Tretyakov Gallery, which is um, which you see behind me, um, at an exhibition about Europe, which actually was in Berlin before. So I think she's kind of uh, starting, trying to start by building some kind of a symbolic bridge uh, to Russia. But I think it's clear that um, you know she has a tough day ahead. Um, on the one hand, Annalena Baerbock has said that she'll be searching for common ground through dialogue. The Russian side, I think, will be um, really checking her out as the new uh, German foreign minister. She had rather tough positions about Russia and also about the Nord Stream 2 uh, pipeline before becoming a uh, German foreign minister. So I think uh, the Russian side will be kind of listening closely to what she says today um, publicly and behind closed doors. Um, the two sides will be talking about bilateral re relations, of course, but I think the elephant in the room is the rising tensions on the Ukrainian border and the security security guarantees that uh, the Russian side has been demanding from the West, including on NATO eastern expansion. Um, and uh, as we heard, Baerbock has uh, suggested reviving peace talks in the Normandy format, so with Ukraine, Russia, France and Germany at the table. So what influence can Germany or even Europe uh, have on Russia at this stage? Well, I think that's the big question. From the Russian side, uh, Germany and even Europe uh, basically have nothing to do with what they've been demanding in uh, the talks that we've seen uh, in the past few days. And, uh, you know, the, the language that we've heard coming from Russia um, in the last few weeks and months. In December, Russia issued demands um, on a limit to NATO eastern expansion. And those demands were issued directly to the U.S. And now, now, um, after you know several rounds of talks last week with the U.S., with NATO, and also with the OSCE, so with European countries, um, Russia has demanded that the U.S. Um, and NATO. Uh, issue a written response to its demands. So it seems like Russia is basically only really willing to talk uh, to the U.S. Um, when it comes to these security demands. And in a way, Europe is kind of on the sidelines watching. Uh, Emily, the EU's foreign policy chief, uh, Joseph Borrell, uh, has said that the bloc was ready uh, to uh, prepare further sanctions against Russia. How long can Putin stick to his policies in the face of these sanctions? Well, I think it's, first of all, important to point out that the Russian side has repeated again and again that they are not um, planning an attack on Ukraine, uh, but they are also not willing so far to take the mil military threat off the table. When it comes to sanctions um, from the Russian point of view, the West really has no leverage and, um, on Russia, um, I think. Uh, first of all, the U.S. has made it clear that they won't defend Ukraine militarily in case of an invasion. And today we've been hearing media reports, at least, that one of the biggest sanctions that the West had been kind of um, holding over Russia, which is um, that the country could be uh, cut off from the SWIFT banking system, that that could be off the table. The U.S. has denied that. But I think it, it looks like even the sanctions arsenal, uh, you know, isn't too strong, at least from the Russian mm. point of view, which, of course, the country has been become used to sanctions over over the last few years as well. Emily Sherwin in Moscow there. Thank you, Emily.